Welcome to Hands-On with the Reinforcement Learning. So we're going to begin a new section today. We're going to talk about dynamic programming. So dynamic programming is one of the key cornerstones of reinforcement learning. And it's quite a chunky, large collection of concepts and algorithms. So I'm going to elaborate as much as I think I need so that we can build a good base for the rest of the course to teach you more complicated things. So in this section, we're going to try to teach the concepts of dynamic programming in the following five steps. I want to first visualize dynamic programming in a JavaScript visualization tool for the grid world environment. And this is going to help us understand visually how dynamic programming works. I've also then implemented grid world as an open AI gym environment that's coming together with your code base uh, along with this course so that we can then build algorithms for dynamic programming on that environment. In the second video, we're going to drill down to the concept of prediction. In prediction, we evaluate a policy based on the environment and we say what's the value of different states under this policy. So we're going to first understand what the policy evaluation algorithm looks like. We're going to actually go through in Python to implement this. In the third video, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing for control. Prediction and control together is one of the two ways dynamic programming can be used to solve reinforcement learning problem. And I know that prediction itself has other meanings in the wider field of machine learning. So bear in mind that in reinforcement learning, when we talk about prediction and control, it's more about dynamic programming usually. And so you have to adjust your words accordingly. In the fourth video, what we're going to do is we're going to go from the first paradigm of prediction and control, and we're going to look at value iteration, which isn't that different, but it's taking the same building blocks we cover in video two and three to use it differently but to arrive at the same result, and that's value iteration. And then after these three big videos where we do a lot of coding, we run a lot of things, we try to link it all back together in the grid world visualization that will be done in the first video. And while visualizing the grid world environment again, I'll explain how that ties back into the concepts that we've understood in the first four videos. So let's dive right into it. In this video, we're going to talk about visualizing dynamic programming in grid world in your browser. Specifically, we're going to use reinforce.js, which is this web-based open source reinforcement learning tool that allows us to visualize how an agent explores and updates its value estimation and its policy in the grid world environment. I want to use this to understand the basics of different pillars of dynamic programming. So let's talk briefly on a conceptual level about dynamic programming. So what is dynamic programming? Dynamic programming computes optimal policies given the perfect model of the environment. So when I say perfect model, it means you understand everything. For example, we've seen in contextual bandits where we already know we have a we have a model of the contextual bandits environment where we know what bandits have what actions and what actions produce what rewards at what probabilities. Something that is less perfect can be either very random, like if you're trying to use reinforcement learning to do self-driving cars, for example, the real world road environment is very stochastic, it's very random, there's a lot of variables, and those variables would fall to different values depending on your luck and circumstance. So that's very hard to, hard to model and that would give you an imperfect model of the environment. Something that's less stochastic like chess or go presents a different problem. The, the environment is so complicated, it's computationally infeasible to model that environment. So 
dynamic programming can't solve for the optimal policy in these imperfect models, but it can solve for the optimal policy given the perfect model of the environment. And this is why dynamic programming is important in reinforcement learning. It's the building block of all other reinforcement te learning techniques. In fact, other reinforcement learning techniques improve on dynamic programming with either less computation time or it can deal with not a perfect model of the environment. The key idea of dynamic programming is if we can find good estimates of value of each state, then we can use that to find the optimal policy. Let's see how this works in the reinforcement.js visualization. Dynamic programming is a little bit conceptual. It took me a long time when I was learning this to really understand what's happening. Fortunately for us, there is now very good tools for us to understand and visualize the concept of dynamic programming. The first thing to do is to go to this URL. I'm going to put it in the code or something. But it's a Stanford course by Andre Kaparthi, a very famous computer vision researcher. And he has created this dynamic programming visualization on JavaScript in the browser so that you and I can benefit from visualizing these algorithms and really understanding it from from a less abstract standpoint. What we have here is the grid world environment. So this grid world environment is like any other reinforcement learning environment. Uh, in fact, I've imp implementing this in the code base that comes with this course. So it's very easy for you to take it in an open AI gym sort of fashion and run it yourself. Let's have a tour of this grid world environment. As you can see here, there is a grid. So each cell in the grid represents a state. So you can kind of go from this state to this state to this state to that state, right? Very simple. Here, notice that there are also other numbers and some funny shapes. What this means here is the arrows here represent what are the permissible actions from this state. So for example, from this top left state, you're allowed to go right into this state, or you're allowed to go down into that state. At the same time, the arrows represent our current policy and its determination on whether it should go left, right, top, or bottom. Right. So as you will see later, it, when our policy evolves, we're going to see the arrows point different ways or some of the arrows disappearing, representing the fact that the agent's policy now dictates for that state, it will never go up, for example. As we said before in the slides, dynamic programming is going to be implemented in this video in two different kind of modes. So number one, we have the policy iteration of doing the policy evaluation step first and then doing the policy update and then going back to policy evaluation. And then the second version of dynamic programming we're going to look at is value iteration, where you compute the optimal value estimation, and then you extract the optimal policy. So two very different things. So let's visualize the first policy iteration paradigm first. Here, if we click the policy evaluation button, it performs one step of the policy evaluation algorithm. So intuitively what you can see here is the value estimates from the agent of the environment has now simply taken on the reward of any terminal state. So as you can see here, any square with a small r at the bottom left corner dictates that this, you know, when the agent gets to this state, it's going to receive a reward of this magnitude. So as, as you can see, one sweep of the policy evaluation step gave the value estimation of this state, simply the, the reward that happens. And now we can look at policy update. Click policy update once. What happens is any state that is neighboring a state with a significant reward estimation will get pointed to the one with a higher one. So for example here, 
this state changed from going to any direction to only going to the state with a positive reward, similarly to these states. This state actually, because you can't go diagonally, uh, it, uh, the policy currently is considering going left, sorry, right or top to avoid going into states where you will receive a reward of minus one. So then under the policy iteration regime, we're going to follow a policy update with policy evaluation step. And as you can see here, then because the agents now has a different policy of transitioning from one state to another, the value of, of the agent being a particular state also changes. Because for example here, if you land on this state and you always go to the next state before you stop, then actually your, the penalty is not as large as minus one, but actually it accounts for all the times when you go to this state and then you land back into another state with a minus reward. But then majorly, the reward for this state is still largely okay because you it, the, the negative reward is offset by the policy pushing the agents to the positive reward states. That's great.